the rationale for patient skin antisepsis is to clean and disinfect the skin around the surgical site, preventing infection. Chlorexidin in different concentrations and different combinations is commonly used. In 1.5% concentration, in combination with cetramide, to clean contaminated areas such as the vaginal mucosa. In 0.5% concentration in combination with alcohol to clean and disinfect the skin. In 0.5% concentration with alcohol and a tint, when cleaning, disinfection and tinting or painting of the skin are required. Where the use of chlorexidine is contraindicated, povidone iodine may be used. In this film, cleaning and draping techniques will be demonstrated on different parts of the body using a patient model. To expedite instruction, chlorexidine with tint will be seen used only on the abdomen. Elsewhere, the area to be cleaned will be demarcated using a highlight and cleaning then simulated as shown. This allows the view of landmarks and structures to be maintained. Surgical draping techniques and types vary widely between hospitals and procedures. The objective, however, is always the same, and that is to build a sterile field upon which surgery can safely be performed. In this film, disposable adhesive drapes will be used to show a number of techniques. Patient skin antisepsis and draping requires a sterile field. For a more detailed elaboration of how the field is set up, refer to the course Table Setting, Basic Instruments and Disposables. Take note of the OR furniture, a kick bin, a mayo stand and OR trolley on which clean implements and drapes have been prepared. Take note of the drapes, sterile gauze swabs, clean container and clamp. An example of how to load the clamp is now shown. A gauze swab is folded and then placed into the teeth of the clamp. This can then be used to clean the patient. Take note of the scrub nurse and the surgeon. This distinction is made purely to help describe the actions. The principles of disinfection and draping will first be demonstrated on the abdomen. Having prepared the cleaning solution and clamp as previously demonstrated, the scrub nurse passes both to the surgeon. Take note that positioned in this manner, both the patient and the surgical table are not sterile. The parts of the body that are not involved in the procedure remain covered to keep the patient warm and maintain their dignity. The exposed area to be cleaned should first be inspected for abnormalities, such as broken skin. Hair removal may be required. The sterile team members maintain a safe distance from the unsterile area. The skin can be cleaned with a number of different patterns. Whatever the pattern, the principle is to start around the incision site and cleaning the skin adjacent to it first. Thereafter, cleaning the skin away from the incision site. In some parts of the body, there are dirty and clean areas. On the abdomen, the area around the umbilicus is considered clean, while the umbilicus itself is considered dirty and is therefore cleaned last. With this principle in mind, observe how the abdomen is now cleaned. As previously mentioned, chlorexidin with tint is used, starting with the skin around the umbilicus and adjacent to the incision site, and then spreading to the skin away from the incision site. Once this is done, the rest of the abdomen is cleaned in the same manner, Bearing in mind the umbilicus is considered a dirty area, which should be cleaned last. Take note of the even movements of the clamp and that there is no splashing of chlorexidine solution during the procedure. With skin disinfection concluded, the swab is disposed in the bin, while the clamp and container are handed to the circulating nurse. For this midline incision of the abdomen, a square draping configuration will be used. The tint in the cleaning solution clearly demarcates where the skin has been cleaned. The square draping configuration therefore creates a more or less four-sided shape within the clean skin, a safe distance away from the not clean skin. Drapes are now used to build a sterile field around this shape. A safe distance is maintained, the drape unfolded and the adhesive part uncovered. The drape is handed over above the table. 
Take note of the distance between the drape and the unsterile area below and of how both OR team members try to minimize contact with the adhesive strip of the drape. The single drape is unfolded by the surgeon on their own, as shown. Once unfolded, it is applied to the patient's side. Take note of how the surgeon maintains a fold at the edge of the drape to avoid touching the patient. The scrub nurse then does the same on the opposite side. Unfolding is performed in a manner that avoids contamination. In this instance, a little difficulty is experienced, but the scrub nurse waits until the drape is completely unfolded before applying it to the patient's side. Two sides of the square configuration are now in place. The scrub nurse and surgeon now work together to unfold a larger drape. Their coordinated actions intended to minimize the risk of contamination. In contrast to the smaller drape, this larger drape is first applied. The additional adhesive strip covers removed, sticking it to the smaller drapes underneath. This larger drape is then unfolded, extending the sterile field. Another large drape is used to perform the same action and completes the creation of the square draping configuration. Take note that typically this larger drape will be placed over an anaesthetic stand surgical table accessory. This was not done in this film to allow maximum visibility. Square draping of the abdomen is now complete. When draping for head and neck surgery, such as a thyroidectomy, Consideration needs to be given to airway devices which may be present. Here, intubation of the patient has been simulated. In working to clean and drape the surgical site, the sterile team must maintain awareness of the airway device and maintain good communication with the anaesthetist. The skin is disinfected starting over the incision site and adjacent skin and then working away. Care is taken not to dislodge the ET tube. As with the abdomen previously, a square draping configuration is used. Take note of how the scrub nurse remains aware of her surroundings as the first small drape is handed to the surgeon on the opposite side. It is unfolded and applied to the patient as shown. Take note of how slow firm movements are used to secure the drape onto the patient and adjustments kept to a minimum. The second drape is positioned by the scrub nurse in the exact same fashion. The third drape is a large drape and is put into place by both the surgeon and scrub nurse and then unfolded to expand the sterile field. Attention is now turned to the final large drape. Placement of this drape requires the assistance of a member of the anaesthetic team. To avoid sticking the drape to the tube, a gauze swab is used to separate them. As the still folded drape is lowered into position, the anaesthetist places a swab over the length of the ET tube, allowing the drape to be appropriately positioned without sticking to the ET tube. This prevents accidental extubation of the patient at the end of the procedure when the drapes are removed. The anaesthetist maintains control of the ET tube as draping is completed. Again, take note that normally an anaesthetic stand would be present, but was not shown in this film to aid visibility. Square draping of the neck is now complete. 